now comes the hard sell. The leaders of Iran and the United States pitching their respective audiences on the merits of the framework announced in Switzerland. CCTV's Jessica Stone has more now on each country's strategy. She joins us live from our newsroom. And Jessica, very different messages being sent here. Indeed, Mike, we've literally seen these commanders in chief become pitchmen in chief from both countries. And as you mentioned, Presidents Hassan Rouhani and Barack Obama each having a, a, a different audience and catering to that audience. While the United States strategy focuses on specific numbers and quantifiable limits to the Iranian nuclear program, the Iranian strategy focusing on how this framework gives their nation due respect, restores economic prosperity, and reconnects it with the outside world. We have reached solutions on key parameters of a joint comprehensive plan of action. Even as the Iran nuclear framework was being announced in Lausanne, Switzerland Thursday, U.S. President Barack Obama was working on his sales pitch to stop U.S. lawmakers from passing legislation he believes would jeopardize a final deal. Both Obama and Iranian President Hassan Rouhani now not only leading their countries, but leading the charge to gain the support of their citizens and their critics for a historic deal. Rouhani, a moderate, spoke Friday of economic prosperity, youth employment and reconnecting to the outside world, appealing to average Iranians crippled by global sanctions impacting the oil, banking and financial sectors. All sanctions, economic, financial, and banking during the day of implementation will be suspended. Rouhani also tried to convince the hardliners in his military and government by drawing attention to the specific backing of the nation's supreme leader, the Ayatollah Khamenei. At this time, I feel the need to extend my appreciation to our supreme leader and other officials who helped us so that we were able to take this step as we will need his assistance in the close future. The bill puts a clock on negotiations. For the White House, it's all about convincing a skeptical Congress, led by this Republican senator, to hold back his legislation from going to a vote. So far, Senator Bob Corker is still planning a committee vote in about 10 days, and he has the backing of these eight Democrats and an independent on a measure that would hold up Iran sanctions relief under a final deal until lawmakers have 60 days to review and vote on it. If Congress kills this deal not based on expert analysis and without offering any reasonable alternative, then it's the United States that will be blamed for the failure of diplomacy. The U.S. President Friday sending his top diplomat to get out ahead of congressional concerns, emphasizing the unprecedented nature of the proposed inspections plan and the decades monitors will have access to Iran's entire uranium supply chain. We will have state-of-the-art uh, television cameras within uh, centrifuge production facilities. We will have cradle-to-grave tracking of uranium, uranium from the mine to the mill to the yellow cake to the gas to the centrifuge out and where it goes in spent fuel. The White House has also promised to organize classified briefings for members of Congress to help them understand the framework and what's at stake. But members of Congress are already complaining that while they've been kept in the loop of what the administration is negotiating, they have not been given the ability to weigh in. Meantime, President Obama also has to sell this framework agreement to allies not party to the talks. And today that included a flurry of phone calls to Persian Gulf countries. Mike? Jessica, thanks so much. And reaction from 